All right. Central African Republic. This was probably one of the most intense countries I had ever been to. So let me just kind of set the foundation first. A few years ago, I made a video that not many people watched. Basically, I was like, hey, I'm making a little bit more money off of YouTube, so I want to invest my money in the poorest country in the world, whatever that may be. At the time, it was the Central African Republic. Now I believe they're number two. I think Burundi just surpassed them. But the point is, they usually rank in the lowest bracket in terms of GDP per person parity index. So I was like, all right, this is the country. But if you know me, I'm also very kind of fiscally prudent. Like, yes, be generous, but don't be stupid with your money either. You know, just because a charity says all the right words and shows you all the sad pictures with all the Sarah McLaughlin music in the background doesn't mean the people working for that charity are allocating the funds properly. You know, I take this stuff very seriously. I don't play around with my money. I don't like putting my money in like a pool and then the charity just kind of like arbitrarily describes how your money is going to help. But then you look at like the open source accounting and realize that like 80% of the finances goes to administration or like vague costs like consultation fees. No, like I want to know exactly where my money's going, how it's helping and what it's doing. And you know, I was raised with Korean money values, but I don't know, maybe that's like the Italian side in me. They're like, don't play with my money, mio frato. I want to help you, but uh, don't make me have a problem with you. Capiche? And the Jonathan's House organization was the only one I could find in the Central African Republic that was willing to actively communicate with me and give me updates and pictures and show me the breakdown, exactly what is happening and how much it costs and what's going to go on. So that's why I chose these people. Then I asked them, okay, you guys are kind of cool. What do you need? First thing they said, we need chickens. We're doing this feeding program and we want to at least give the orphans and the kids in the community at least one egg every week. Let me repeat that. One egg a week. So I was like, okay, let's do this. Chickens. And then they were like, we would love it if you could come and see the actual orphanage. And every year I wanted to, but I had to cancel. But then finally the pandemic was kind of dying down. The world was opening up a little bit more and this was my window of opportunity. So Back to Africa. So I'm gonna level with you guys. I don't have a lot of useful skills. I'm not a doctor, I'm not an engineer. I don't play any instruments. I learned four chords on the ukulele and I kind of stopped. But one thing I do kind of have is time and a little extra money. And sometimes those can be useful. So for this trip, my purpose was basically to be a courier. My job was to transport these water filters. In many of the rural communities, this country has limited access to clean water. I didn't know anything about these water filters. I'm not the expert. This lady, Robin, was the expert. She flew in from Idaho, super smart at everything. She's an engineer, she's a farmer. Her job would be to install those. My job was to transport them. Robin, explain, what were those water filters for? Well, they're actually called village water filters and they're actually designed specifically so that a family can use a gravity-fed water filter to take something as slimy as pond water and turn it into drinkable water. And uh, yeah, when you get there, um... Okay, ça va. Alors, uh... Quand je suis ici dans la République Centrafricaine, je dois utiliser le français parce que, bien sûr, ce pays est un pays francophonie. C'est la deuxième langue qui est utilisée ici. Malgré la majorité des gens ici par Sango, qui est une langue comme en créole, mais bien sûr, je ne le parle. Alors, euh, mon français n'est pas parfait. Euh, mon gram ma grammaire est horrible. Comme ça, je ne sais ce que le mot est masculin ou féminin et je mélangeais et tout. Je parais comme un enfant qui a un euh, cerveau cassé, <rire> mais euh, je n'ai le choix, je dois essayer. Few notes. Due to the internal conflict, there isn't really much of a tourism sector in this country, and it's pretty intense, I'm not gonna lie. For one, it is actually expensive. It's interesting, you would think a developing country would be cheaper, not here. Not only just to get here and access, but the pricing for things like retail and food, they're actually not that far off from being on par with the EU or US and Canada. Even when you have a local bargaining for you, it's still gonna come up pretty close. To enter, you will be required to have a yellow fever vaccine, and it is highly recommended that you get malaria medication, I got Malarone, as well as mosquito spray, both of which are very readily available in most pharmacies in the country. Another note, interacting with the locals is a little different. This is one 
one of the very few countries I've been to where the people were very standoffish. They are kind of suspicious of anyone and everyone, even other Africans. The people here, they all know their immediate communities. So if you're not part of it, chances are they're probably gonna approach you with more caution. Why? Because they've been through it all and they've seen it all. Pretty much everybody here has a story of death. It is estimated that somewhere around maybe 10% of the entire country is orphaned. They have a high infant mortality rate, often gastrointestinal diseases are the cause, and due to the internal conflict, casualties of internal fighting are common as well. It's a complicated country, but what it comes down to is, this is not a country you can just kind of waltz in, do whatever you want, and explore everything everywhere, and have access to anything you want. This is not one of those countries. I wish I could tell you guys, yeah, the Central African Republic, go explore everything you want, you'll have everything you need, enjoy. I wish I could say that to you, but I would be dishonest if I said that. This is a country where if you want to go, you have to be willing to adapt. So with all that, finally, I was off to go to the country. Now, if you're flying in from Paris, you will get the most amazing view ever if you're flying during the daytime. You will get to see half of the entire continent of Africa transition from the North Maghreb all the way down to the jungles. You even get to pass through whatever remnants of Lake Chad are left before it dries out. All right, here we go. Upon arrival, I was greeted by Samuel. Samuel is one of the heroes of this entire story. He does so much work for this orphanage, it is insane. And none of it would have been possible without him. In addition, I was greeted by Donna and the Jewels, Charlie and Gay, as well as John. These people are missionaries. They've been in the country for over 30 years. And if there were any people I've met that were truly dedicated to this country, these would be the people. They are all fluent in Sango, the national language. <laughs> <laughs> How did you two end up here? I was born in Africa in the Chad with two missionary parents and grew up here in the Central African Republic through high school. Parents retired. We were looking at a place for ministry and we ended up deciding to come back to Central African Republic and continue the work that my parents had been involved in. I'm with him. <laughs> <laughs> I, I grew up in just Pennsylvania, and my dad says, if you marry this guy, you're going to go to Africa. And how 1983. long? 1983. 1983. So I arrived here in the Central African Republic when I was a little less than a year old. So I did my, uh, my elementary school and high school with the missionary boarding schools here in the Central African Republic. Started seminary met my wife, and we came out together, and it was in April of 89. So I came here, actually I was born here. My parents were missionaries here, and so I was born in this country. We left it when I was 10, and then I came back just a year and a half ago full-time to work at the orphanage. I'm a school teacher by trade, and I've always had a heart specifically for female education in countries where education is not prioritized, especially for females. Right away, it was off to work to do some errands. Driving around town was quite a sight. First, you see UN cars and trucks everywhere as they are very active around the country. You see hustling, bustling streets with open air markets. Every major government building, embassy, school, or compound is surrounded by tall walls with barbed wire fence and guard stations. Along the Ubangi River are the tallest buildings, mostly hotels or upscale residential buildings. And overall, you see a sense of typical metropolitan life going on. The very next day, it was right off to work. I didn't even have time to explore. We'd be able to do that later in the trip, but right now it was orphanage time. We had to pick up 10 large sacks of chicken feed, get a whole new oven, and then drive off. And yes, by the way, Bangui does have modern department and grocery stores. They're all owned by Lebanese people, by the way. I thought that was really interesting. Now, of course, due to the ongoing conflict within the country, I am not at liberty to discuss the location of the orphanage, but I will say the drive out there is stunning. <laughs> Here we go. They keep putting me on baby duty. <laughs> Kid doesn't listen to me. I'm a terrible babysitter. Mm -hmm. 
vert sur le, les arbres, euh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. rouge sur le front de, de, de la femme. <rire> la deuxième impr impression est l'air ici est creux, pur et, 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 et propre. Mm -hmm. J'aime bien ça parce que où je vis, l'air est très sale. <rire> Et très pollué. Oui, pollué. pollué oui. Oui. Trop de bâtiments, euh, les gens, les voitures. Quelles sont ces ce bouteilles qui se vendent vend de... Quoi À la côté de la, la, la bouteille. Oui. La bouteille yeah. Oui. Et l'essence L'essence Oui. Oh. Gaz Oui, l'essence de... Pour la moto et la ah, voiture. Ouais, la moto, oui. Oh. <rire> First, to even leave the city, you always have to go through a checkpoint. You are not allowed to freely go across the country. You need a permit and you need to be able to pay to go outside of anywhere in any village. There are checkpoints everywhere. Along the road, you see so many kapokie trees. Those are my favorite. They're long, spiky, pleated trunks and flat canopy tops. Along the roadside, you pass by countless small villages with thatched palm roof and ochre colored stone brick houses. These are called brick bati houses. Usually they are accompanied by a wood and straw A-frame roof gazebo looking thing called a payot or anga. These are used for cooking or just hanging out under for protection from the sun or rain. All along the road you might see these long streaks of white. This is manioc, the national staple made of the mantioc root. They dry it out, crush it into powder, then cook it into a thick squishy staple for every meal. It's very similar to fufu or ugali. I freaking love this stuff. It goes so good with amaranth du stew made from the amaranth leaves. You guys know that palak paneer is one of my favorite foods. This stuff tastes very similar. I was going crazy over it. I loved it. There's some good food in this CAR. So we arrived at nighttime, obviously off grid, very few lights. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, we did kind of run over a pig and accidentally kill it. But like, we honked the horn like 20 times, but it just ran in front of the car. Like, at some point, you're just kind of like, so anyway, it's estimated that only a little bit over 14% of the country actually has access to electricity, mostly concentrated around the capital Bangui and the surrounding areas around the Bowali Dam, which serves as the primary source for the entire grid of the country. This means in the rural and outskirt areas away from this strip of land, you have to either depend on batteries, solar, generators, and fire. Upon arriving, it was dark. You have to use the flashlight to get around. All the lights here are powered through solar. So you gotta use flashlights every single night. We go to the main house where the female orphans stay. It's the only building on the property site that has a generator for electricity. And if anything happens, they actually have a wall switch that they can switch off to solar reservoir. It was interesting, I've never seen that before. Otherwise, all the other buildings on the site are off grid, no electricity and no plumbing. This was my room, just a single mosquito net bed, no lights or fan, which was ironic because my curtains had electric fans on them. So this is my bed. Mosquito net and uh, no blanket because it's warm enough. You don't need one. And of course, this was my shower, a big container and bucket. I've done this many times in the past in even worse conditions, surprisingly in Korea. And uh, there's actually a very rare natural phenomenon that happens in this area in which uh, this happens. So, Donna, explain the whole bug situation. What is up with this? So these are stink bugs. Stink bugs are seasonal and they're only on this hill. They come once a year, mm -hmm. generally in October, November. Mm -hmm. um, they last a month, six weeks, and a bad year, two months. But they come in, they, they're all over the place. By morning, they're all on the ground, 90% of them are dead. Just October, November-ish, this happens? October, November. You can't escape them. They just will be there. They even get in your plates and your foods. So here's the deal. Obviously this was an orphanage. So I would be introduced to orphans. Now I'm gonna be a little honest. I'll admit, I'm not exactly amazing with kids. It's not that I have anything against them. It's just, I'm kind of awkward around them. It's like, hey kiddo, how's that? Minecraft. I don't, I don't know. I mean, I can put on the Barney face if I have to, and like half of my friends have kids anyway, so I've had practice. But yeah, it's just, I, I'm a little awkward with kids. But when you come here, you have no choice. You will have to interact with them. They follow you, they cling on to you, they ask you questions. So I was like, okay, may as well uh, talk to these kids a little bit. Maybe they can uh, show me around. Apollo? Come on, Oh. 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 No? Okay. <laughs> Comment tu t'appelles? Je m'appelle Grace. Grace? Et, et toi? Joseph. Joseph. Ah. Peux-tu me prendre un peu son go? Comme dit vous, je m'appelle en son go. Je m'appelle en son go. Et tu m'appelles Grace. Tu es encore? Mais tu m'appelles? Et tu m'appelles? Et tu m'appelles? Et tu m'appelles? Et tu m'appelles? 
and Paul. <laughs> And then it kind of popped in my head. I gotta see the one thing that started this whole trip to the CAR. I gotta see the chickens. Grace, uh, pouvez-vous m'aider? Je cherche pour le poulet. C'est où où est Le poulet. Le poulet. Oh, montre-moi. Là-bas. Oui? Ok. Wow. Nombre de poulets. <laughs> Going good. That was amazing. It's like I was looking at my very own investment right before my very eyes. It was like, wow, I got these chickens. It was a really cool feeling. But in any case, the orphanage also has a clinic next to it that serves the community. The clinic has a lab, a maternity ward, offices, an operating room, and patient rooms. They depend heavily off of well water and pumps to provide not only drinking water, but water for their crops, which grow all along the property. Samuel took me around and showed me. Quels sont ces plantes? C'est le manoc. Manoc. Euh, oh. On appelle cassava. La nourriture mm. de base mm. de comme ce le, peuple. Comme le pain à l'Asie, comme le, le riz. Ok. Oh. Parce que nous, on mange les feuilles. Mm. Oh, les feuilles oui. aussi. Oui. Et on mange aussi les racines. Ça. Pas, pas de le. Pas, pas les tiges. Oh, yeah, non, okay. pas les tiges. Est-ce qu'il y a des serpents dans ce plat? Um, non. Là, c'est un petit pays riche, mm -hmm. mais avec une population pauvre. Ah. Les richesses ne sont pas exploitées. Les ressources et ouais. des autres choses. Ouais. <rire> Plusieurs ressources naturelles. Et le minéral Oui. Ah, ouais. Or, zinc, uranium, chaque 10 ans, il mm -hmm. y a toujours la rébellion. Chaque 10 ans Chaque 10 ans. <rire> Donc, quand il y a la rébellion, les rebelles détruisent tout. Après, on dit que non, on aide le pays à, à, à reconstruire, à se reconstruire. Et quand on fait ça, après 5 ans, 10 ans, une rébellion encore surgit. <rire> Soon after, I was invited to check up the schools nearby. The classes are taught in French. It's estimated that somewhere around three quarters of the men and about a quarter of the women speak French proficiently. French is the money language in this country. If you know it, your chances of getting ahead increase. From there, we headed to the feeding program where about 400 local kids in the area come to get a free meal after school provided by Jonathan's house. They cook whatever they can afford and put in their stockpiles. This is what the chicken project I was working on is supposed to help with. So it's cool, it's kind of like seeing it come full circle. After Afterwards, Samuel brought me to the boy orphan's home. He did a little health analysis on the local children in the neighborhood. I was invited to check the inside of the homes. Obviously no lights. They use handcrafted flashlights to see in the dark. Light is almost like a commodity. In the rural areas, if you don't have light, you just sleep until the sun comes up. That's kind of how it works out here. So that was basically the orphanage. It was mind boggling to be in like a completely off grid area and just kind of seeing how things operate out there. So it was time to go back to Bangui. One of our cars got stuck in the mud and it delayed us for about 45 minutes, but we got out and then we got back to Bangui, but I was not just gonna stay in my room. I had to get out. So I went for a walk. So I'm just gonna go for a morning walk here in Bangui. Ah. Uh, my country's embassy. Dude, I found this amazing path. It looks so beautiful. And there's trees and flowers everywhere. And it's right next to the river. River's right there. This is honestly one of the most beautiful walks I've ever been on. Nothing beats the view of the Ubangi River in the morning. You can see fishermen setting up their nets and people crossing over to the Congo on the other side. In two days, I would be crossing it. I had to, it was on top of my list. Later on, Brice, the Jules' son-in-law, gave me a ride on his motorcycle. This is one of the best ways to travel in my opinion. They say experts don't even need to hold on to anything with their hands. I used one hand on the seat rails. Never mind this guy holding an entire mattress. Back downtown, I had to check up on one of the only few land marks of the city, the Notre Dame de Bangui, the largest and most iconic cathedral of the country. Inside, it's pretty impressive. They have statues and pews that go down with a long aisle. Right across the road from the cathedral, you find the artisan's market. I had to take a look. So many wonderful carved wood crafts along textiles and artwork. Then I went out jogging the next morning and something interesting happened. This guy started following me. Ce matin, uh, uh, je juste marche dans la rue et maintenant, je cours avec Elby. <laughs> he just Le joined me. Ami. Yeah. Bon ami. Yeah. J'ai écouté de, uh, près de l'église. Uh, tu veux voir l'hippopotame. Uh. Et alors, maintenant, nous allons à la... I didn't expect this to happen. I just kind of went with it. And uh, Hervé just kind of talked to me. And he eventually showed me the east side of Bangui. L'église. Bonjour. 
Un basilic. Et quand a ah, fini Pour Moi, je pense que ça va finir dans les années. En, eux, en année de, Deux non, ans Dans deux ans même, deux ans, ça va finir. Deux ans Oui, deux ans, ça va finir. Et euh, tu penses que ça sera le plus grand basilic dans... Oui, c'est plus gros. C'est plus gros. Plus basilic. grand de Notre-Dame Non, ça, ouais, c'est plus grand plus que Notre-Dame là-bas. C'est oh. plus gros aussi plus que... De cet endroit. Oui, c'est un endroit là-bas. Oh. Oui, on, on va attendre un peu là-bas. Si oh. on descend là-bas, on va attendre un peu. Si on va à 7 heures. Il va sortir là. À quelle heure est-il maintenant Hein euh, En 6 heures Ah C'est okay. fort. Ok, ok. Jusqu'à même partir là-bas, on va voir lui d'abord. Oh, un peu. Là-bas Ouais. Ah. On va prendre le pilote en moteur. Tu penses que euh, tu peux pas aller euh, d'accord en français Non, non, non ton français c'est bien. C'est bien. Un peu, un peu, tu vas parler tout d'abord. <rire> Je préfère parler avec les gens de, de le pays euh, francophonie dans l'Afrique. Ouais. Parce que. Il me, il, il me toujours répondre en français, ouais. mais quand je vais à la visite à l'Europe et à France, ah, okay. il me toujours répondre en anglais. Euh, Alors, non, 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 je, non, ne non. Peux, je ne peux pas pratiquer. Non, non, il faut avec, euh, des, il faut avec des français d'abord. Anyway, so I asked Hervé, what do you do? And he says he makes jewelry specializing in customized grommets or these metallic wrist brand bands. Uh, he gave me this one as a little gift. I still wear it to this day. I actually haven't even taken it off since I left, except for during airport security. So I told Hervé my plans and I told him to meet me on the last day. But in the meantime, we had some other stuff to do. The next day was Congo day. I had to make this happen. It would be very difficult, but I kind of wanted another country under my belt. <laughs> See, unless if they are from other Central African nations, the DRC is very strict with anybody visiting their country if they don't have a visa. Right across the river from Bangui is Zongo DRC. The only way to get in if you don't have a visa is to get a laissez-passer on your passport. This is what it looks like. Even if you get the laissez-passer, that's not enough. You have to have somebody waiting to meet you on the other side to vouch for you when you get to customs. I was very lucky. I came on the day that these guys, Mark and his son, Ben, we're gonna cross over. Mark was a missionary. He was born in the Congo. He was returning and would meet up with his old friends, Pastor Tinza and his lawyer friend, Nabwe. And uh, they kind of allowed me to piggyback off of them. This is Zongo, Congo. Made it to the other side. <laughs> if you are able to do all that and cross over into Zongo, it's kind of a small town, mostly just used as a harbor for shipping, not too many major landmarks. The only main difference is that you start to hear the Lingala language a lot more. After going back, the jewels wanted to take me to what is probably considered the number one spot in the Central African Republic, Boali Falls. Boali is the site of both the dam where all the electricity is created and where the majestic waterfalls are located. part for me though was uh, something else. Guys, I really am in the best place ever. <gasps> jackfruit! It's my favorite. I'm literally in heaven right now. I've never been around this many jackfruit. <laughs> These things go for like $40 each in the USA. Finally, it was the last day and Hervé stuck to his word. He showed up. Okay, Hervé. Oh. Uh, à ton avis, quelque chose Je dois acheter pour mon ami et son bébé. <rire> tu vas acheter des arbres, tu vas acheter des arbres comme ça pour les souvenirs d'Afrique. Ok. Tu achètes et il va, il va apporter ça. Euh, je ne peux pas. Et comme ça pour les boumets, tout ça aussi. Je ne veux acheter un euh, vêtement parce que voilà. le bébé grandit vite. Ah. Alors euh, peut-être un jouet. Ouais, on euh, bon jouet. Euh, quelque chose autre. Quelque chose de bon okay. d'avoir avec lui. Tu me recommandes. I asked him to show me where he worked. I wanted to buy his jewelry, so he agreed. We walked through the downtown market area. This lady yelled at me for filming. Hervé brought me to an artisan shop. I got my mom this cool silver necklace. I got Caleb a baby rattle for his new daughter. They probably charged me a lot as the outsider, but whatever, I worked within my budget, so I was happy. In the end, I wanted to kind of keep in contact with Hervé, but he didn't have a phone, he didn't have a computer, nothing, no internet, no email. So, I bought him a phone. C'est bon? <laughs> 
Gervais, si vous regardez cette vidéo, uh, j'espère que tu vas bien. So those were some of the highlights of my trip. There's a lot of other little stories along the way that I missed out on because it's just this video would take too long. But I will say it was a very intense trip, but I loved it. People say the CAR is the world's most quiet crisis. It's kind of like the kidnapped princess of Africa. There's a lot of backstory to this place, but the good news is that the story is not done. And I'm really glad I was able to go and see and witness a part of it. I wish everyone the best. Thank you guys for watching. Stay cool. Stay tuned.